It's our story. Patrick Connolly, Berkeley, California. Well, I, the problem with young people and disability is because you have seasons of disability. You have a chunk of people entering at birth, right? And then your next big chunk of entering is between about 18 and 22 when kids are graduating and starting to learn how to drink and stuff. So you have a huge number of spinal cord injuries. And then that drops off. And then you start getting the big chunk of people at 35 when the uh, um, chronic diseases start happening and stuff. Um, so, I mean, when you talk about young leadership and disability and stuff like that, you're really talking about a really limited population in terms of everybody with a disability. Um, yes, I think kids with disabilities definitely need it. And I remember as a kid being in, in seventh grade, having the principal come into the school and uh, to the adaptive PE class and apologizing that the segregated school wasn't open and we'd have to be mainstreamed till high school. Um, you know, and a lot of us went on to college, whereas if we'd gone, you know, afterwards when people go to segregated schools, you know, you're really marked as a loser, right? I mean, I just, you might as well wear a sign saying loser. Because um, unless you're that one in a million person that can overcome all that, you are. I mean, and most people aren't going to be that way. Um, and I mean, Ed grew up in that environment too. I think that that was what was incredible about him was saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to live that life. I'm going to be my own person, and I'm going to create my own opportunities, and I'm going to go out there and do things. And I mean, for me, uh, that knowing the guy was, you know, I, I don't know what my life would have been like. It, it just, because uh, when I met Ed, it was like a few years after my head injury, and um, I just was not together at all. And uh, I... I I, I won this uh, award, an art award at the Sac State, uh, the Student Purchase Award. Wayne Tebow, who's a world famous artist, awarded it. And they called me in there and, and told me that they weren't going to give me a reception and told me I would probably cheapen the award if I accepted it because I was a head injured person and I kind of acted really retarded or mentally retarded. Symptoms of it, that's politically incorrect to say that way. But. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't know I was disabled. I mean, the professors there, I mean, there was one guy, Carlos Villa, because there was another woman there who had, had a stroke and she was trying to get into the art education program and they denied her, uh, they, the faculty voted not to accept her into the program to become an art teacher. And he was livid because he said, you know, you guys don't get it. You're being discriminated against on the basis of your disability. And we just kind of stood there and, and didn't understand what was going on, even though we were being, even though we were achieving we were being told we were losers. Um, and I think that's, that's what Ed did. He changed that. And if that's the most important thing he ever did, I think that's, that's an incredible thing. Um, uh, I think that message can be kind of sicky and, and icky, like they made Helen Keller sicky and icky. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a really powerful thing. And that's not about getting somebody on Section 8 housing with a SSI and, and benefits and stuff. It's, it's not about that. It's about being your own person, going out there. And some people are never going to work. I mean, some people have disabilities and, and kinds of things where they're just not. Uh, but it doesn't mean you can't contribute and have opportunities and stuff. But I mean, as the unemployment statistics show, most of us are still fighting to get to the bus or to get to a job, not actually being able to show what we can do. Um, my own struggle has been that way. I mean, I, I don't drive, so I mean, I, I had to create a job in my own home. Um, I was too radical to work at most independent living centers, um, even though I had been around all the people that started it and stuff. I mean, that, that was a weird thing in the early 90s, was you'd have these people leading these huge movements and demonstrations and things like that, and they couldn't get a job in the advocacy agencies except as the under-assistant benefits counselor. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.